Well, today I'm going to skip way ahead in my series on the lives of some of the early Celtic saints from here in Scotland because I want to tell you an incredible story from the life of Saint Adamnan. And I think once you hear it, you're going to see the relevance that it has for our current situation today with the coronavirus. But I really believe that the Lord has something for us as believers that He wants to release over us as we hear this story. Well, Adamnan had been part of the community on Iona, and of course this is the community that St. Columba had established many years before. But at some point during his time in Iona, Adamnan felt like the Lord was calling him to be a missionary to some of the Pictish people living in a very remote glen in central Scotland. Now it turns out that this glen was literally the most remote area in the whole of Scotland. So Adamnan moved to this glen and he settled there and he began to minister to the people living there. And much like many of the other saints of that time, these men and women of God, Adamnan moved in an incredible level of the power of the Holy Spirit. And before long, the people recognized that Adamnan was teaching them about a God that had incredible power in the natural realm and in the supernatural realm. Well, in the year 664 A.D., a terrible plague swept across Britain and Ireland, and eventually it made its way up to the tiny little village of Fortingall that lies just in the far eastern end of Glen Lyon, just outside of the Glen. And tragically, the plague literally took the lives of all the inhabitants of Fortingall, except for one older woman. And so, sadly, the task of burying everyone in that community, friends and family, fell on this one woman. Well, as you can imagine, fear had gripped the hearts of all the people living in Glen Lyon. And so they went to Adamnan and pleaded with him and petitioned him that he might rescue them from this plague. It's interesting, the account actually says that they went to Adamnan with full confidence because they had seen that he had already demonstrated that he moved in signs and wonders and miracles. And they hoped that possibly he could work a miracle in this situation as well. Well, Adamnan gathered the people together here on, on this very hill that I'm standing on. And as the people came together, Adamnan began to pray over them and pray over their communities and over this whole region. We don't know exactly what Adamnan prayed. I'm sure he prayed that God would protect them from the ravages of this horrible plague and I'm sure he prayed as well that God would break the fear that was gripping their hearts and give them peace and trust and faith in Him as their protector. Well, what the account does tell us is that when Adamnan finished praying, he raised his hand and he commanded the demonic forces that were empowering this plague to present themselves before him. And then he commanded them into a rock that was behind him on the other side of the road. Much the same way as Jesus would have commanded the legion of demons into the herd of pigs in his own day. And the story says that the demons hit the rock with such force that they bore a hole into the rock as they went in. Well, when Adamnan finished praying, he instructed the healthy people of the community to move farther up into the glen and stay in the sheilings until the effects of this plague had subsided, while he and his companions stayed behind to tend to the sick and the dying. Well, the account indicates that not one single person in Glen Lyon died due to the effects of the plague. But even beyond that, remarkably, the, the record indicates that the plague never even took hold anywhere else in Scotland after that account. Well, when the people did eventually return from their sheilings up farther up in the Glen, they carved a cross into this little standing stone that had been here as a memorial that God, the very God that Adamnan had been teaching them about, had rescued them and delivered them from the ravages of this horrible plague. Well, when I first started studying the story of these early Celtic saints and started going to many of these locations where their story took place, 
I started having some pretty incredible encounters with the Lord in these different places. And at one point I just kind of stopped and I was like, Lord, this is amazing and it's really cool what's been happening, but I don't quite understand why I'm encountering you in these ways when I come to these specific spots. So the Lord started telling me what was actually happening behind the scenes when I was coming to these places and, and encountering Him in these, in these amazing ways. And what He actually showed me was quite profound. So it was around that time that my brother came to visit me here in Scotland. And one day he was telling me about this archaeological dig that he had helped out on in Israel a couple years earlier. And so while I was pondering these things, I kind of had archaeology on my mind. And the Lord really used that to show me what was happening in these places. And the Lord said, you know, Lance, just as the physical ground is affected and changed and marked over the centuries as, as generations of people come and go. He said the spiritual climate is very much the same. And when people interact and when things happen in the spiritual realm, it literally alters the spiritual atmosphere in that location. And then he said, you know, when archaeologists do their digs, they find things. They find bits of pottery and, and arrowheads and scrolls and things that were left there by previous generations. And he said, Lance, the spiritual realm is very much the same. Not only is the spiritual atmosphere shifted and affected and formed in response to the spiritual activity that took place there, but he said at times things are literally deposited in the spiritual realm as a result of significant activity that took place on that site. And so in the case of these Celtic saints, what they left behind in the spiritual realm takes the form of the mantles and the anointings that they operated under when they performed the signs and the wonders and the miracles and the healings that they did in these different locations. And those mantles and anointings then become the spiritual inheritance that they left behind in the land. And so when I talk about claiming our spiritual inheritance in the land, I believe there's literally mantles of power and authority that these early Celtic saints operated under that they've left here for us as an inheritance that we as the church in the modern day can now lay hold of and claim as our inheritance in this land. So I just want to share a quick illustration that I think will give a bit of context and perspective to what I'm talking about concerning inheritance. So just the other day I read an article in the newspaper that said right now in the UK in 2020 there is literally over 15 billion pounds worth of unclaimed inheritance money just sitting in the banks. Now this isn't one big giant pot of 15 billion pounds, but if you add up all of the inheritance money that has not been claimed, it adds up to 15 billion pounds. And so what this means is that there are loads and loads of people out there that have potentially a quite significant inheritance do them, and they haven't even claimed it. Now here's the kicker. You want to know why none of these people have claimed their money? Because they don't even know it's there. And you know what? I believe the Lord is saying the same thing to the church in Scotland. We have a spiritual inheritance in the land here in Scotland, and we don't even know it's there. So when I first started working on these videos, the Lord spoke to me, and He said, Lance, whenever you go to these locations to film, he said, I want you to take some time and engage with me so that you can discern what the specific mantle is that was released when that miracle happened 
because I want you to take that mantle and I want you to release it over the body of Christ here in Scotland. And here's how I want you to do it. He said, Lance, I want you to commission angels to take these mantles to the people in the body of Christ all over Scotland who are prepared to embrace this mantle and begin to walk in the authority that this mantle carries. So as I stand here now on, the, on top of this hill where Adamnan nearly 1,400 years ago broke the power of the plague and the, and the demonic forces that were empowering that plague, and he literally stopped that plague from affecting the people in his region. I lay hold of that mantle and that anointing that he operated under. And I believe the Lord is saying that it's a mantle of supernatural power over the natural realm and specifically over the demonic forces that are exaggerating and empowering sickness and disease in our nation today. And so as I lay hold of this mantle by faith, in the spiritual realm. I commission angels right now to take this mantle and release it over the people in Scotland whom God has prepared to take this mantle on and begin to walk in the power and the authority that this mantle represents. And I bless these people to carry this mantle and I bless them with the grace and the humility and the faith and the courage that are required to walk in the anointing that this mantle carries. And I want to bless each one of us as well, that as we watch this video, that we would be encouraged and inspired by this incredible story from the life of St. Adamnan. And that we too would be an incredible blessing to our communities as well. Amen.